Hey everybody, today we'll be learning about Monte Carlo ray tracing. It sounds super fancy because it is, but first we need to understand the less fancy version which is rasterization. This is the current method most games and visualizations use to render light in scenes. In rasterization, objects are represented by a mesh of triangles. Each triangle has three vertices which each have a normal. We can calculate the brightness of a point on one of these triangles by checking the angle between this normal and the light source. We can create smooth lighting by interpolating over the normals. Once we have the lighting across a triangle, it's only a matter of projecting that triangle onto the camera plane. Do this for every triangle and you have a lit scene. But there are some problems with rasterization. One, we can't render things that aren't triangles, right? It just doesn't work. And two, Fancy effects like reflections, shadows, and distortion are either realistically impossible or very difficult to implement and require special tricks or approximation. Combining these effects gets even more complicated and computationally expensive, and more importantly requires more and more rendering passes. Basically, anytime you want to add more of these effects, you have to add another rendering pass and a heck of a lot more code. It is generally not so much about the fact that rasterization couldn't do the things it probably could, but it would most likely need several rendering passes and all kinds of dirty tricks to accomplish things that depend on non-local effects. So how can we fix this? We can fix it with ray tracing. Ray tracing simulates reality by tracing light rays in the direction opposite to the direction that light actually travels in. So we can trace rays from each pixel in the camera backwards into the scene where they bounce around off surfaces with different properties. But how do we simulate this and the different physical properties of each surface? We may make a few key assumptions about physical surfaces. 1. For a given indoor scene, every object in the room reflects light towards every other object. 2nd. There is no distinction to be made between illumination emitted from a light source and illumination reflected from a surface. The illumination coming from surfaces must scatter in a particular direction that is some function of the incoming direction of the arriving illumination and the outgoing direction being sampled. Ray tracing uses assumptions to render scenes. We can combine these assumptions into an equation known as the rendering equation. L sub E is the light emitted from the surface. F sub R is the bidirectional reflectance distribution function or BRDF and L sub I is a light reflected by the surface. Omega, which is the region we iterate over, is a hemisphere centered around the surface normal. So the integral represents the total reflected light, and thus L sub O represents the total outgoing light from the surface. We can't solve the equation analytically, but we can create algorithms that approximate it, which is what Monte Carlo ray tracing is all about. So now the next question is, how do we approximate an integral that we can't solve analytically? Essentially, it's a kind of numerical integration using random numbers. We can approximate an integral of a function by evaluating it at many random points and taking the average. Here's what that looks like as an equation. In the equation on the right, we are approximating the integral on the left by evaluating n samples and averaging them. Now that we understand Monte Carlo integration, let's apply it to ray tracing. Ideally, we take an integral over all outgoing ray angles with the given light intensities coming in at those angles, as described in the rendering equation. Remember that the outgoing trace rays physically represent incoming light rays as we trace light into the opposite direction that it actually travels in. But we can't actually take this integral because we can't solve it analytically. We don't know the function that we are integrating, as that will require already knowing the photorealistic incoming light intensities at every angle, which is exactly the problem we are trying to solve by rendering the image. Instead, we can apply Monte Carlo integration. We will sample incoming light at random angles by tracing them backwards and average them to get the light for the outgoing ray we are trying to calculate. Random sampling allows us to efficiently render any effects or scenes we want to. If we didn't use random sampling and instead just used normal ray tracing, we would either have to use only one sample ray per bounce of a surface or shoot out a ton of rays per pixel. With random sampling, we can simulate the effects we want without having to use brute force. To find the intensities of each of the incoming light rays, we have to find the point at which those light rays originated and do the same procedure there. 
We can't keep bouncing around the trace race forever, so after some threshold of bounces, or after we hit a light source, we terminate the recursion and return. Each surface has its own properties, like what colors of light it reflects, how diffuse it is, and how translucent it is. Because of this, Monte Carlo ray tracing can easily render distortions, translucency, and mirrors simply by defining different properties of surfaces and then just running the rays through these different surfaces. Monte Carlo ray tracing can also easily render other exotic shapes besides triangles, like spheres and other parametric surfaces as we just need to be able to calculate intersections and surface normals to propagate rays through the scene. We aren't limited to rendering triangles like with rasterization, and we no longer need to do approximations like normal interpolation to get smooth surfaces. We can even do motion blur. Because motion blur is just the average of light rays over time, we can easily do this by keeping a buffer of recent rays. Path tracing is like Monte Carlo ray tracing, except instead of sending a ray from the camera and expanding a tree of rays outward as the ray hits surfaces, we trace a single path in this tree backwards until we hit a light source. We also discard paths that don't terminate in a light source after a certain number of iterations. This results in more realistic lighting because randomly choosing paths gets you a distribution that better fits the actual distribution of light in the scene because this better simulates light as single particles bouncing around. In conclusion, Monte Carlo ray tracing is a fancy method of rendering very realistic scenes by tracing light rays back into the scene. We can accurately and efficiently render fancy effects like reflection with Monte Carlo ray tracing, something that is near impossible with rasterization. Although Monte Carlo ray tracing is more computationally expensive than rasterization, it looks much more chic.